Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. This is an elliptic curve in Sage. There's um, pretty fast code in Sage that does it, which is in Paris. And uh, it'll compute in a reasonable amount of time, say, all the AP for P up to, say, 10 to the 7th. But there's much faster code due to Drew Sutherland, which can um, go farther. And that's what Drew is using behind the scenes. But the thing with Drew's code is basically he's the only other person that's ever used it. He uses it. It's not um, in any you know, software or anything. Um, but what he did is he just spent a lot of time really optimizing and computing the uh, A sub P. He also has stuff that computes things about uh, or similar information about Jacobians of hyperelliptic curves, so it could actually be relevant to your project as well if you wanted to do something with very large p or an enormous number of p. So um, he has this code which he's made available to me and which I plan to incorporate or make usable in, from Python, and that would be another project. Um, there's a lot of code, and I think, I think it has some funny issues where you have to compile it. It's a C program, basically, but you have to compile it with different options depending on whether you want to count points on elliptic curves versus counting points on genus 2 curves, et cetera. So there, there may be some like tricky programming issues involving compiling multiple versions of his library with different parameters. So it's kind of like a, a first a C programming task, figuring out how to put it all together in a way that's usable from Python. Um, uh, as far as the license and stuff goes, he's perfectly happy including the code in Sage, no problem at all, uh, making it open source. And I, I think I have copies of the code available. Um, that are fairly recent. So it's no problem getting the code, but getting it into Sage um, has some interesting issues. And then once it's in Sage, running it and seeing if we can replicate some of the numbers you had in your tables that he produced, um, possibly with some other curves or something, I think would be nice and seeing if one can extend them. I might have better computers than he has, so we can see where, it, where that goes, um, et cetera. So that would be this project. It's kind of a, uh, I think a pretty concrete corner of what your talk was about. Okay. That's generally useful. So I was, yeah. I was momentarily distracted by trying to put the slides online. Oh, but sweet. Good. Oh, Let me. Is uh, that, um, do, what does that involve doing in a, in a practical way? So his code is in what form? So he wrote, so his program is a C program. It's completely standalone. It um, doesn't depend on any other programs as far as I know. So what, what it has to do is make it so that his C program is easy to use efficiently from Sage. So and Sage would actually be calling this Yes, program. yeah, but it wouldn't call it as, in the sense of like, write stuff to a file and run his program as a standalone program, but it would do it all in memory using um, Cython, which is a C uh, kind of a Python compiler that allows you to make it so you can call C code directly from, from Python. So this is probably a good project for people who are interested in that kind of... Partly. Well, half of the project would be really good for people who kind of like C programming or at least maybe not actually programming in C, but at least have a sense of, of how C programming works and want to learn more about Cython or something like that. I think another half of it, though, will be deciding on running that code in some interesting ranges and extending the data in your tables or replicating some of it. Mm -hmm. And that would involve someone more like you who you know, appreciates and understands what calculations might be worth doing. Mm -hmm. um, and there might be even, since it also works and is very efficient for this has popped in my head, but for um, Jacobians of curves rather than just elliptic curves. I mean, have you looked at the analog of your problem, but with a hyperelliptic curve instead of an elliptic curve? Mm -hmm. Makes sense, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. the Haas interval is just bigger, but there's still... So one could run a calculation up to, you know, 10 to the whatever, but for, the, for a genus 2 curve and see whether or not there are any pairs like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, ex so running the code and also trying to make it usable from Sage. And they can happen at the same time because we can just get the code, compile it, and you can try it on the command line and then see what you get as well. Um, so that's what I imagine. So I guess the tasks would be um, genus 1 versus, well, make code usable from Python, use code. Um, and then regarding use code, uh, replicate and extend data in Kate's paper. Or talk, I should say. Um, maybe try genus two analog. So that's 
so that's the sort of thing I guess I have in mind. Um, and this this involves Cython. So, okay, and then let's see, for computing the cardio, I should make a list of tasks here. So um, I think the thing to do with this one would be to, you know, make a Sage worksheet that just implements this, that is slow and just implements it, implements algorithm. Because, I mean, I bet somebody can write some code to do this in a Sage worksheet in like two pages or less that's dog slow, but it works. And check that you're getting reasonable answers out. Um, and then make it really fast, really, really fast. That's always fun, because it'll be 100 times faster than you know, the first thing. Um, uh, you know, but getting the answers to be right can be challenging correctly. Um, <laughs> that's where it's really useful to have some, you know, I mean, if you don't know anything about the theory, you may have no expectations about what the right answers are. At least we can check for elliptic curves, I guess. Um, make it really, really fast. Uh, let's see. I guess those are the two tasks, or uh, get it included in Sage. Sage itself, which is partly what my next my talk will be about. So those are some tasks for this one, and probably making a big table, big table, or something. You know, you could take some curves, compute the ranks, make a big table. How are they distributed? Maybe there's a conjecture there. That, um, that you haven't thought of, that Rachel hasn't thought of yet. Or do you have any conjectures about the ranks that you'll talk about in your talk that one could get data about? Yeah, um, so. I would love to find a um, curve of P rank zero and A number one. <laughs> so there you are. So we could run, what, once there's some code, even with the slow code, once there's some code, you could just start running it in some region and see whether Anything like this is found, and then you know get the faster code and make and run it again and quickly redo what was already done, and then see what happens. And you know, if, either way, if you find something or don't find something, it's going to give yeah. insight towards a conjecture. Yeah, I did genus four and P plus three. Okay. okay. Oops, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I would love that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I misspelled your name. How do you spell your name? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> equals three, thanks. Okay, um, so good, those are concrete tasks. I'm gonna save it because I'm paranoid. Yes? Excellent. Do you want to come up here and explain it or explain it from there or something? Okay. <laughs> Until you suddenly realized. <laughs> Was this talking? You were talking to yourself. No. Okay. Jen? You're you're also named Jen, so. Yes. No. Uh, other okay. Jen. So here. No, don't put it up. Okay. My notes. I see. I'll take. It's not for. Not for public. This is for public <laughs> consumption. Yeah. Okay. It probably has some things that are wrong in it. Ah, that would be nice. And then you can twist them to get other ones. I assume. Okay. Oops. Okay, so are there any other projects that should be? So yes. I have, okay. uh, I have a question. It, yes. In Sage, is um, our cubic and sextic residues implemented? Probably in Sage, are cubic and sextic residues. It has something to do with Hilbert symbols, probably. Maybe um, not. Let's see. So, but we can certainly look at it. It feels like something that people always just do something quick using. Is it in Perry, first question? Uh, no, I think we had to. Write something. Yeah, people usually do. Like they just use the alternative formula. So I don't think so. I don't know. Because, it's um, possible. Because the, the 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 question that I had about the counting the number of residues with this certain thing being a cubic, mm -hmm. um, if it's not implemented in there anywhere, I certainly wouldn't mind uh, having that implemented. Just because then it would be really easy to collect a bunch of data and look at the. You know, there might be, from a bunch mm. of data, there might be some interesting conjectures about the and counts. Even if it's implemented, it might be slow. So you can make it fast, which is important for the sort of thing you're doing. Is that something be 
Right, it has to be fast because you want to get all this asymptotic data. Um, <laughs> when you choose when to write really fast and really, really fast. <laughs> oh, I should always write really, really fast. <laughs> Kate wants data. Okay. All right, so. Uh, What is it? I like to be able to confuse uh, the card groups of non maximalists and quadratic imaginary fields with the ideal of group balance. Hmm, interesting. So, uh, Magma, in quadratic imaginary fields? Yeah. Magma does this, but it's wrong. And, uh, Isn't there a simple, like, a, there's an exact sequence that relates the card group of the non maximal order to, like, o OK mod COK star where C is the conductor? Yeah, and, and then, you can also yeah. do it with the binary quadratic form. So it yeah. gives you the class group as binary quadratic form. It's a okay. generator, mm -hmm. but it doesn't do it as a So, field. let's see. I'm writing a paper right now on Kali Vaughan's Euler system, but okay. we're computing with exactly those. Yeah. Somewhat as a group is a critic, is kind of a central thing. So there is some code in the Higner.py file that does things related to this. Um, and I... So I don't know, I've thought about that a lot lately. Um, but yeah, I think I have some thoughts about good ways of doing this. But I think that the, the actual OK mod COK rep star representation is potentially a very good one to use because arithmetic is so fast there. And you can translate back and forth between any of the different representations for these ideals. But yeah, that'd be a good idea for a systematic um, like cla Python class that does this. That puts together all the different code. Um, okay, I can make something. Let's see what this be. Compute in non-maximal orders of quadratic uh, rings of integers. I just write of quadratic imaginary fields. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's a nice. Yeah, specifically with the card group. Yep. Oh yeah, I should say computing the class group. Or computing, you really want to compute in it. You want to have elements, you want to do arithmetic quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have an application? Uh, I'm just playing around with examples. Mm -hmm. um. I like to compute in those because they give you the, they're, they're equivalent to working with the Galois groups of ring class or ray class fields of, actually ring class fields of, um, of uh, quadratic imaginary fields. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty important for, a lot of applications. Okay, so uh, what to do? So I guess make a list of what you want to be able to do. List why magma slash peri aren't good enough. Like how, like you said, there are bugs. So bugs, issues, speed, etc. Write really fast. <laughs> That's <laughs> code to implement some of this. Yes. Okay. All right. Any other projects that people have related to number three? Yes. I'm also curious if we can calculate the Gibson character. Hmm. Okay. Where do I put that? Which Gibson character? Um, like Any. I was using uh -huh. in my talk. So mm. Oh, right, right. CM, what the yeah. I wonder if that's related to your question. Probably is. Um, explicit calculation of pressing characters. When we had to do ah. So that could be a good thing. Um, you could explain what the algorithm is that you implemented in Perry to people. People could come up with a nice design that's really user friendly and documentable and then implement it. So yeah, I think that would be nice to have. I'm pretty sure if I type gross in tab in Sage, I don't get anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if you search in Sage, often a useful thing to do is to type search underscore source. Oh, I was going to ask you this question. I think it does a case insensitive search of everything. I guess I could do Grosin. It searches through all the source code. It tells you if there's anything in the Sage source code. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. Because startup the first time is annoying. Nothing. I think it's case insensitive, but just in case. So you can see there's very likely absolutely nothing in the Sage library for Grosin characters. 
So yeah, I think that's a great idea. Okay. Um, as a what? Serotate characters possible? I have no idea. But I'm sure we'll get something if we type Sarah. I hope we get something. <laughs> yeah. Sarah Carton Steenrod. This is an algebraic topology. Sarah is a very general guy. Sir, series reverse. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's it. So it's just some algebraic topology, and that's it. And series reverse, in which Sarah's name appears. OK, um, so now let's, I'm going to put a list of people who are very interested in each project. Um, OK, so let's see. Obvious people, Rachel. OK, if you're interested in the project, just Say your name. OK. Um, Ali, OK, Kate. Actually, that's a good question. I mean, probably, I think a lot of people are interested in a lot of them. I find that I'm interested in every single one. But let's just say, OK, put your name if you're like really, really interested in this project. Let's just say. Like you want to drop, if you feel like you see the project and you want to drop everything and work on it for the next 10 hours, kind of interested. There's, see, there's a lot of hands going up for the first one. Okay. Um, maybe say your names because I'll, I'll be embarrassed to not know people's names. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to very easily learn everybody's names and their spellings. Okay, good. Anya. Okay. Sarah. I don't know if I misspelled Sarah. Okay, good. Maria, excellent. Marina. 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 Ah. Okay, good. All right, moving on. Drew Sutherland, Small Jack, etc. Extending Kate's data. <laughs> I'm interested in this one. I'll put my name on this one. Lola. Lola. This is sort of several different projects, though. I'm not sure. If, uh, if there is one project in here that you're desperately interested in. Aaron, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> totally wrong. <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, anyone else? Wait. Um, okay, L series of Jacobians, I'm guessing the gens, or at least one gen. Is your name? You're another gen. Oh, great. <laughs> okay, wait. So Jennifer B. Jennifer P. Jennifer J. J. <laughs> okay. All right. Any other Jennifers here? No. Anyone else interested very much in uh, computing L functions, L series? Okay. J cubed. <laughs> it should be called J series. <laughs> Okay, uh, computing in the classic group of non max orders. Uh, I'm going to put myself again. Anyone else? Okay. And I think that's all the projects. Don't feel that you're restricted by having your name, but I think it's just useful having names up there because it gives you a sense of who's really, really. Yes. Uh, let me get this. Sure. Ha! <laughs> I could be on all of them if I wanted because I'm up here on the keyboard. <laughs> Um, okay, good. So, uh, and also when people work on a project, it can be useful to put like a link to something they're working on here so that it's easy to, to find. Okay, so let's see what time is it. Looks like we have successfully organized projects. And we have some specific, very concrete, doable things and some very challenging things and so on. Okay.